Now, in the last general election, the Liberal Democrats won just 11 seats. The leader, Jo Swinson, lost hers. It was a really dismal time for the party. But since then, they have had four by-election victories, all of them in what were Conservative seats. Their party conference started yesterday in Bournemouth. Sir Ed Davey has come to join us and to talk to you today. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Thank nice you very much show. for being here. Um, can we start with a word cloud, please? done by the Public Opinion Research Group, More In Common. They asked this question, and we'll show it to our viewers now. What does Ed Davey stand for? There it is. Anything equality? I can't even read half of these things. It's just the word economy. Okay, brilliant. Love it. What they stand for, what the Liberal Democrats actually stand for, is whatever will they position that they can tactically take to win whichever MP or council seat that they are trying to angle from. Whether it be trying to campaign against the Labour Council spending too much money, or any amount of additional construction of new infrastructure or housing, because they are indeed the NIMBY party, as we have seen given their policy rollback of not increasing taxing on the rich, and also rolling back on their potential plan for housing targets, maybe getting rid of housing targets, truly cementing themselves the NIMBY party. They've got absolutely no idea. What do you think of that? Well, I'm glad I'm on your show to be able to explain what I stand for. And in the general election, I'm sure people will hear. And it's about, for example, improving our health service and our care system. It's about helping people with the cost of living. They're in real struggling with mortgages and rents. They need political parties to say how they're going to help them. It's on the environment where we, for example, led the campaign against the awful sewage dumping. So we're getting over our ideas. Uh, is there work to do? You're absolutely right, Victoria. But you've been leader for three years. They've got no clue about well, we've been you. winning by-elections, as your clip showed. We've been having success. Yeah, but by, by winning by-elections they just campaign on what specific local issues that they can attack the existing party on regardless of what they are and they will change their position regardless of what it is like for example remember when there was Layla Moran who was on question time talking about issues with housing for example the housing crisis there needed to be more houses when Layla Moran was campaigning to be an MP she stood on opposing new house building and has been happy to back council campaigns in her area that also campaigned on restricting new housing so these people literally have no sincerity in any of the policies that they hold they don't believe anything they have no ideology they will just take up tactically for political reasons whatever position they think that they can take to win elections it's the most cynical politics Yes. Where people have heard our message, uh, particularly in conservative heartlands, people have been switching to us. I, I'm really proud of what uh, my colleagues have been doing up and down the country, because it's not just in those by-elections that you showed, mm -hmm. where we were persuading lifelong conservatives to, to vote for us. It's also been in council elections across the whole United Kingdom, okay. where we've been defying the polls, uh, defying what our opponents and people have said about us, and actually winning, because people have been hearing our message, uh, won't say don't know, they say yes please, and they've been voting for our uh, parliamentary candidates and our council candidates. Let's have a look then. Name some policies. What do you stand for? What's your ideology? No one knows because it doesn't exist. You didn't answer the question. It's he's so similar to Keir Starmer in that manner, isn't he? I mean, to be fair, he was a consultant, so he does come from that kind of breed of political careerists. In a bit more detail at some of your policies, housing, massive issue yeah, for uh, renters, for people wanting to buy. In 2021, you said, or the, your party said, your policy was aiming to build 380,000 new homes a year. This year, you scrapped that target. You said you're going to focus instead on council housing and social housing, and you're committing to 150,000 of those homes a year. Is that enough? Oh, wow. There's an actual policy. As someone who likes council housing, is this Ed Davey to the left on house building than Labour is as far as social housing goes? So it's very weird, the position that they're in, where they're scrapping house building targets for the private sector, but have a plan to build social and council housing. I wonder how many of those council houses will actually get built in Lib Dem councils. I wonder if they get into power, they take credit for Labour councils building council housing. Yeah, well, we're debating this actually on Monday at uh, Bournemouth, exactly this, what do you this, think? this issue. And, and I think we do need a target for social housing. That's something that... Why is 150,000 enough? Well, that's on social housing. We, we want to build more houses with the, the private sector. Um, but on the social housing, I'm really glad you picked that up. My wife is a councillor in my constituency and she's got the lead on housing in the council. And she's now developing the largest council house uh, building project we've had for over 40 years. And it's that sort of investment uh, in local communities to provide the affordable housing that Liberal Democrats stand for. Right, because the but, Housing but, Federation says we need £300,000 a uh, Sorry, 300,000 yeah. homes a year. 
And government targets are needed to focus people's minds, to focus private developers' minds, to make that happen. Well, we have a target on social housing, which yes. is what's not being built at the moment. I'm That's asking true. about... Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm coming to I, mean, I think Dot Gobbler probably is right in chat. The 150,000 council homes will probably have more impact than 350,000 overpriced Taylor Wimpy houses. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that statement. Yeah, I think you might be right. But it is incredible that even the Liberal Democrats are to the left of Labour on social policy, unlike trans issues, they're to the left of Labour on building council houses, but to the left of Labour on recreational policy. What's going on? But then again, their national policy has just been geared to the fact that the whole, whole country has become more left-wing on economics over time. Again, I don't think anybody in their party really holds these values or holds any values at all. Clearly, people want to have these things, so let's just change our position to do that. Which, to be fair, at least puts them into a better camp at this point. But it's really important to make the point we do have a target on social housing, because that has been the sector that's seen nowhere near enough investment over many, many, many years. And if you but, don't qualify but, 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 for social housing? Well, um, first of all, if you do build uh, council houses, and this is often and not understood, you free up a lot of houses in the private rental sector. Just you like know, that? Well, yes, let, let, again, it's really important. It's a problem across the whole country. Councils uh, over recent years have had to, because they've not had enough council houses, put uh, people who needed housing in the private rental sector. And um, we've now seen the private rental sector because of concerted policies contract. Councils now having to spend huge amounts of money going over budget by putting people in temporary accommodation in hotels. So our policy was actually really good value for money, providing proper council houses okay. so councils could house people. You keep focusing on council houses. I absolutely understand I, the reasons why. Let, let, me, ask the, let yeah. me ask the question. Please, can I? Why have you got rid of the 300,000 target? Well, we think the top-down targets lead to developer-led approaches, as we've seen with conservatives. And what you see with developer-led approaches, you see the wrong houses being built in the wrong places. Don't take my word for it. That was to what Theresa May said. And what I mean, we are... Again, he's not wrong. Like, he's not incorrect. When you let the private sector do what they want, they will build the houses that are the most profitable, not indeed the ones that people actually need and want and would like to live in at affordable prices, which is what you do get from council housing and social housing. I can't disagree with that. Our approach, and it's been tried and it's worked, is a community-led approach. What does that mean? Well, it means that you have things like no local neighbourhood plans. Right. We legislate for those. So that means the community... Oh, there we go, there we go. Right, I knew it was too good to be true. I knew it was too good to be true. There we go. We finally admitted it. Yes, indeed, he is the NIMBY. What he means by local community plans is let the NIMBYs in the area be able to block the developments if they want to, because that's what the community wants, even though the people who need it are not the people with the vested interest to get involved in the political decision-making, because they are the minority in those particular constituencies. I knew we'd get to the NIMBY policy eventually and finally we're, it's out there, it's out in the open. The community is involved in the whole stage. Sure, and which means they can object well, and yeah, stop houses I, being I, built. And they go. can in the developer letter model, but in the community letter model you take them with you. And let me explain where it's been done, why it's worked so well. Briefly please. It, it, it results in houses that people want, in the places they want, with the infrastructure they want. So often you hear that people are objecting not to houses, but they're objecting to the fact there's not enough GPs, there are not enough schools, that the water infrastructure can't take the new homes. So you, it, a community-led approach means you're not just thinking about the houses, but you're thinking about the whole community infrastructure. That's what's been missing, and that's what we're... Okay, so what's going to happen if they block the development? What's going to happen if your community-led approach means the, the local community decides they don't want any council housing at all because it might let ruffians in next door? What do you do then? Then you're, the, all of your potential community plan where you're bringing people with you just stops. Is what you're saying really, this policy is about appealing to conservative voters in conservative constituencies that you are targeting as well, we head to the next uh, election? I actually think our policies on the health service, on the environment... I'm asking you about housing in conservative oh. constituencies. Well, I mean, I think uh, they are popular amongst many people. I think our council house a building project... We keep talking about the council house policy. We've yeah. talked about that. We, yeah. we know but, what the target is. Awesome. I'm asking you, Lib Dems, Lib Dems have had success campaigning in conservative mm -hmm. constituencies where you've campaigned against local housing developments. Is that what this is about? No, 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 no. It's absolutely not about that. I mean, it literally is exactly about that. <laughs> <laughs> At least we finally got to the, the, the crux of the issue. There was all of that chin wagging about we've got this plan for council houses and then you finally get to the actual brass tax here and it's like indeed what will happen is that local communities will be able to block these if they want to. Uh, what we said for example in the Cheshire and Amersham by-election uh, that we won and people said we were uh, against uh, houses everywhere, we, what we were against was developer-led model and I can't stress this enough. When you take communities with you, you de-
What about the council-led model? What about the local authority-led model? What about the state-led model? What about just getting the housing built through the state with a state-owned developer? If you want to be able to put the, the community housing first, have something that's owned by something that the people own publicly. If you if you think developers are bad, which I also agree, we have a big problem with developers only building things that are financially viable rather than are best for communities, then have a developer that's owned by the people that can make things based upon utility rather than profit. Do see more houses being built. Don't Again, don't take my word for it. There was a report done by the, the government department responsible that showed that the neighbourhood planning that Liberal Democrats wanted and, and, and want now leads to more houses being built, okay. but they, they, they have on. the support that they need from the local people. Let's talk about relations with the EU. Exactly. The, the whole community-led stuff means we don't get things, as Zeod points out in chat, like council quotas, which again, soft Tories, but good, fine. They're Tories, what do I care? Uh, in 2019, you branded yourself, the Lib Dems, as the Stop Brexit Party. Now you're saying people on the doorstep aren't talking about Brexit. Are you going to go quiet on it as well? Well, I think we're talking a lot about it at our conference, quite rightly. You, you, you're right that we did fight against Brexit and we voted against the trade deal that uh, Boris Johnson bought. It was a disastrous deal. We were the only ones to vote against it. Labour didn't. And we voted against it because we knew it would damage our economy I'm and our farmers now. and what, so on. What's the position and, now? Well, it, it's because of that history that um, I'm very happy to tell you we remain very pro-European. We want Britain to be at the heart of Europe, but we're also deeply realistic about what's going to have to be done to enable us to improve our relations with Europe. Unfortunately, does Victoria Derbyshire manage to convince anyone that the BBC are impartial, do you think? I mean, she's certainly better than Laura Kay. What this has convinced me is that Laura Kay should be permanently replaced by Victoria Derbyshire. Cause apparently she did a good job on Newsnight the other night as well, holding Robert Jenrick to account. This Conservative government has so soured our relations. European politicians don't trust the UK anymore. And that's a very sad position. And it's against our national interest. So the next parliament, the next government has got to engage with Europe in a way that this government isn't doing. So the Lib Dems support, unless you've changed this, a longer term objective of the of UK membership of the EU. Is that still the position? Well, I've been really clear that Britain must be at the heart of Europe. But Does the, that mean rejoining? Point, what it means is we've got to start where we are at the moment and rebuild those relationships. At, okay. the, at the moment, Euro um, European politicians are not listening to the UK, no, and, and, and that's damaging our industry. Answer the question, Ed. Answer the question. They have said that there's no desire to rejoin the European Union, despite the massive, like, rejoin EU march, which we'll watch later, because it's very funny. And they, they have branded themselves as, like, the Stop Brexit Party. And here he is, just continually prevaricating, rather than actually answering the question that's being asked to him, about something that's been the heart of Liberal Democrat strategy for the last five years. So much so that they even tanked soft Brexit to try and stop Brexit entirely and left us with hard Brexit. So for them to completely U-turn on this now, Keir Starmer style, is incredibly funny to me. And you're deflecting from the question, is the Lib Dems position that ultimately you want to rejoin the EU? Well, that's, that's currently not on the table. I'm Victoria. asking you, well, no, I know, I, I know it's not on the table. I'm asking you what your policy is. Well, I, I'm telling you that in our manifesto, in our uh, pre-manifesto being debated at Bournemouth, sure. we are focusing in on what's got to be done over the next five years to, to strengthen our economy, to strengthen our security, because we're not cooperating. Yes, yes, grow the economy. It's just, it's Keir Starmer Mark II, except less transphobic. What's going on, chat? We truly are in political sludge territory right now. Just every single leader just sounds completely identical. Cool. And the thing is, I don't even care that much about Brexit. Whatever, I'm not fussed either way. But at least the Green Party, for all of their faults, campaigned on staying in Europe, then tried to deal with the issues of Brexit and as a party are now standing on rejoining the European Union because there is a large amount of political support for joining. It's weird how basically the only party is the Greens who are straight up saying, our policy is rejoining, we want a framework and a roadmap to rejoining and trying to siphon in all of those pro-EU, anti-Brexit types who want rejoined happen immediately, which is a large portion of the public. In fact, polls show around about 60% of the country wants to rejoin now if there was a choice between rejoining or staying in. So there's a huge amount of political capital to be gained by being an explicit anti-Brexit rejoin EU party. And all of the main parties have completely ditched it outside of the SNP and the Greens. Whereas Ed Davey isn't even answering the question about what their long-term plan is with regards to EU membership. If they wanted to keep themselves as the pro-EU party, their brand image, 
message, then surely he would answer and say, even though there's no specific you know, desire to rejoin now, we have so many problems to deal with. As far as the long-term plan is concerned, yes, we want to be back inside the European Union. That would be a completely fair answer for him to give if their brand was, let's rejoin the European Union. But he won't even say that. With Europe as we should be, on tackling crime, that's a disgrace. So I really want, Liberal Democrats really want, is to completely rebuild that trust, rebuild that relationship so we can be at the heart of Europe. That is going to take time. We have to take the British people with us. We have to convince European politicians that we're serious because they, they feel very let, let down and it's damaged our economy so badly that we're going to have to take time to rebuild and, that. So, and some so, of your supporters feel let down because they want you to be absolutely clear. Yes, we the Lib Dems will rejoin Europe. Well, I, I, I will think, you know, maximise public support for rejoining the when was the last time you ever saw any reporter on the BBC put the person they're interviewing under the, this much scrutiny? On the, both this question and the previous question, she said, no, no, look, you're not answering the question. You're not actually giving us a firm answer on the explicit question that I have asked here. So I'm going to ask again, doubling down. Will you, will you not commit to this idea of wanting to rejoin later? I'm glad to see finally some scrutiny coming from a BBC journalist. The UK hasn't really diverged in any meaningful ways. It's mostly a point of principle and urgency position at the moment. That's true. I mean, you know, we're still pushing those Brexit border tariff checks further and further and further down the road, despite the fact that the EU wants us to adopt those tariffs to disalign with the European Union. And the Brexiteers somehow think that that's a bad thing and that the EU are playing hardball with us about honouring the Brexit that they wanted. It's a very strange position to be in. The EU. Yeah, well, I, I, I think when people hear uh, our policies, uh, they really get that we are the pro-European party. We're the only party. Uh, I think it's, it, this is really fair to Can you, to can focus you just on. say out loud, well, yes, the Lib Dems well, want to rejoin well, the EU? What I want That's to tell you is, is our policy. We passed it at our conference. Right. We have a full... You won't say the words, though. It's so weird. Well, it's not weird at all, because what I'm focusing in on is how we rebuild that relationship. And it's a four-stage approach. No, we, I, I mean, we have not time details, for four stages. But it's I think a you very have made detailed and it's a very good policy. OK. Um, so yeah, literally, she just admits, are we not going to answer the question, then let's move on. I think the audience got the message there. This man believes in nothing. He literally believes in nothing. It's so blatantly political opportunism. Everyone who has like a functioning cranium can understand that this is all just political positioning and electioneering. Coming to the end of our conversation, you obviously you were in coalition government with the Conservatives in 2010. You were Ooh. a minister, uh, cabinet secretary. That was five years. It cost you massively in the 2015 election. You've already said... You True. Do you call him an accessory to death? Sides, do it. You wouldn't do any deal with the Tories ever again, as far as I can see. Um, what about a potential deal with Labour in the scenario of a hung parliament? Well, you're right to say that um, there's no way we could deal with the Conservatives. I'm asking about they've, Labour they've, now. I'm coming to that. Uh, they've ruined our country. Uh, I fought them all, all my life. I fought them actually. In, you were in, in government in, in, with them. Yeah, and I fought them in well, government. They literally stopped soft Brexit because they didn't want to do anything that would be good looking for Corbyn, right? If the Tories had lost any of the indicative votes on changing the Brexit deal, their party would kind of have collapsed in the public image and that would have benefited Corbyn. Well, we can't be having that. We can't let the communists in charge. So they tanked soft Brexit. So now we have hard Brexit and we've got five more years of Tories. Uh, yeah, so thanks, uh, Liberal Democrats, for that. Brilliant. Love, love your work. Big fan over here. I'm even wearing the colours for you as well. Every day. Um, for example, we managed to make Britain the world leader in offshore Let's wind. Let's go over and the Tories, 13 uh, years uh, ago. Uh, fought that. Well, I mean... I tell you what you didn't fight the Tories on, though. Right? I tell you what you rolled over for the Tories on when you're in government, Ed. Remember 5p bag charges for increased sanctions on benefit recipients? Remember that, Ed? Is that a good memory of yours of when you got concessions from the Conservatives like you did on wind power? Hmm. Mm, it's weird. I remember that time when you were an accessory to... I don't think everyone else in chat does as well. At the moment, I'm just focused on removing lots of Conservative MPs and electing as many Liberal Democrat MPs as we can. That's why we're focusing on the NHS, focusing on the cost of living, focusing on the environment. Would you go and into I, coalition I, government with uh, Labour? Well, I, one thing I've noticed in politics... One thing I, I've I, noticed is you're not wanting to answer no, this question. No, well, I'm, I'm going to. If you can exactly. He literally doesn't answer. She's, again, this is an, an impressive showing from Victoria Derbyshire here. He says, oh, we're focusing on cost of living. We're focusing on the NHS. What are your policies? We don't know your policies in either of these things. Is it just more money for the NHS, which, to be fair, would be better than what we have? Are you going to change the model? Are you going to have less or more privatisation? What are you going to do about the doctor strikes? What are you going to do about all of these things to fix the NHS? About cost of living, are you having more cost of living payments? Are the unions going to be stronger to argue for better wages for workers so they can hit the cost of living crisis better by having more money in their pockets? What are you going to do? 
because at the moment it just looks like continuity neoliberalism because it is chance um i've looked at predecessors i've been in politics a long time i've worked with a lot of liberal democrat leaders and when they have focused on that question they've been distracted from the task in hand and the task i set myself when i became leader of the liberal democrats was to be as many conservative mps as possible and get the conservatives out of government and that is what i'm going to focus on i'm not going to be distracted and the more liberal democrat mps we have in the next parliament the more influential we can be Thank you very much Thank you. for being with us. So, no, he didn't answer the question. She said, will you answer the question? He said, yes, I'm getting to it. Then he didn't answer. I think it would be so easy. It would be easy to say, we wish that we could get as much influence as we want. But to get the Conservatives out of power, we will at some point have to consider some kind of either coalition or supply agreement with the Labour Party, who are likely to be the biggest party coming to the next election. So we're going to have to consider some kind of relationship electorally once the election is finished in Parliament to ensure the Conservatives don't stay in power simple easy answer that doesn't necessarily commit to anything but will actually answer the, the question it is so similar to starmer as well like there's just no sincerity no clarity from any of our politicians so the people are screaming out for some level of sincerity from our political class and they get nothing they get just continual rehearsed lines not answering the questions every single politician clearly has learned from the kind of tony blair era of politics where it's all spin rehearsed lines whatever they've been briefed upon beforehand and never to deviate from that no sincerity whatsoever which is to be fair a very kind of blair era style politicking we don't have governments we have pr teams for corporate power basically true calmac yeah if you enjoyed this video please do consider liking and subscribing it does help out the channel and the algorithm and if you click the bell notification icon it will let you know when i go live and when i upload videos if you'd like to follow me on social media my handle is at no justice mtg and that is twitter tiktok facebook instagram twitch and youtube if you want to support my channel in a more financial manner you can do so by becoming a member for just 99p by super chatting or by supporting me on patreon with the link is in the description of this video and hopefully i'll catch you on the next segment